Hello, this is Jenny of the Madison Historical Society in beautiful Madison, Connecticut. Here we aim to connect the stories of the past with our lives today and to our visions of the future. So what does the father of one of America's greatest judges have to do with modern day virtual reality technology? And what do they have to do with the Madison Historical Society? Well, to answer the second question first, in our collection of more than 8,000 objects, the Madison Historical Society has several artifacts from the late 1800s that remind us that our cultural fascination with visual effects began long before George Lucas's first Star Wars film in 1977. In fact, ever since photography was invented in the 1840s, people have longed to see more than just a two-dimensional photo. Before photography, people depended mostly on drawings and painted portraits and landscapes to learn about other lands, other people, and other cultures. Travel was arduous and expensive, and the need to care for farm animals made long absences difficult to arrange for most. So pleasure trips for recreation and education were often only within the economic reach of wealthy people. People with fewer resources often stayed within a day's horse ride from home and learned about the outside world through books, newspapers, magazines, and lectures given locally. For visual entertainment, traveling magic lantern operators created popular evening productions using painted slides that projected images on a screen. Hand-cranked kaleidoscopes also were sold to fascinate the eye. By the mid-1850s, daguerreotype and glass plate photography began to change how people experienced the world. The beginning of the Civil War and the need to help soldiers and their families keep in touch helped to boost the technology and spread it across our nation. Yet, as wondrous, inexpensive, and realistic as photographs were, they could not convey depth or dimension like an artist's painting could. Oliver Wendell Holmes, the father of a famous son with the same name, decided to do something about it. Born in 1809, Oliver Sr. was also famed in his own ways, a great polymath of his generation. He was also a poet, teacher, medical reformer, scientist, and literary success. And in 1860, he invented the Holmes-type stereoscope, also known as the Stereoopticon. This device, held up to the eyes, had adjustable lenses that kept in position two photos that had been taken simultaneously at slightly different horizontal positions. When the user looked through this new device, these nearly twin images merged in the mind's eye into a single three-dimensional image. This innovation was astounding in its day, and it's still fascinating now. Before his death in 1894, Holmes did not patent his device or try to profit from it. Instead, he purposely gave the idea away to the world for anyone to make or improve. Simple to produce and operate, versions of his device remained in popular use into the early 1900s and can still be purchased today. The Madison Historical Society owns two Holmes Stereoopticons and has many stereo images for use in them. They still work perfectly well and they often evoke an amazed response of pleasant surprise from modern viewers with no batteries or Wi-Fi necessary. So keep in mind that even though we live in astonishing times full of technological advances, the latest virtual reality systems draw upon advances made by creative people over hundreds of years. We can't even imagine how current developments will germinate new advances in the distant future. To see these and other artifacts in our collection, search for Madison Historical Society albums on our Flickr site, and then, See what you might imagine or invent all on your own.